there guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about the ragged tooth shark, otherwise known as Carcarius taurus. Uh, taurus meaning bull, no idea why it's got that name, but yeah, it's there. The ragged tooth, also known as a grey nurse or sand tiger, uh, but along our entire coast it's going to be known as a raggy. They, in terms of coloration, it's quite a, a fat bodied fish. It's not the uh, sleekest, trimmest athlete of them all. It's got a bit of a belly to him but a sandy sort of brown color with a, a long floppy tail. They got their name, Ragged Tooth Shark, from their teeth. The very long curved teeth. Uh, looks like a bad hair day, but in someone's mouth, they really not the, uh, the prettiest, prettiest uh, smiling fish of them all. Uh, they do have little brown blotches along the whole body, uh, but very difficult to uh, mistake the shark for anything else. When you catch a raggy, you'll know, you'll know it's a raggy. Uh, the only other shark similar would probably be a lemon shark, but the lemon is a lot uh, a lot thinner in, in shape, doesn't have the bigger belly of the, the raggy, and the snout is not as pointed as a raggy snout. Uh, the lemon sharks also, they're not going to be very common, uh, more you're looking at Sodona Bay North. It's, a, it's quite a tropical, tropical shark and they have longer pectoral fins and a much higher dorsal to the raggy. Uh, the raggies have been actually been known to, to herd fish. They actually work in a, in a team. So they can often split up, work around fish and corral them into an area where they can uh, attack them. Although it is quite a sluggish fish, uh, especially very common and very popular with divers because they sit in the caves during the day, they're nice and relaxed, they don't charge at anybody. Um, but the raggies actually have been known to take bonnies out of schools and things, so they do have a bit of speed when they need it. Uh, they mainly piscivores, which means they eat fish. Uh, those teeth are for grabbing and holding onto fish before they swallow them. They are, like we said, in, kind of inactive during the day. They're not moving around, they're going to be hiding in ledges, caves, that kind of thing, and they generally congregate together and then at night they'll come out and feed. Uh, they're very comfortable in shallow water, so they'll come into gullies. Often at night you'll, you'll hear a splash or something, shine your torch, and in the gully right next to you there's 150 kilo raggy just cruising around looking for fish. Um, in terms of area, we get it along our entire coast. They, you do get the big pregnant females off more north, so Mapelan area is probably gonna be your most popular spot to go to for them. Um, but yeah, as I said, they occur along the entire coast all the way down. Uh, Raggies, like we said about them staying in the caves and just sitting there, they do come up to the surface and gulp air. It's because they're not naturally buoyant, so their body mass makes them sink slowly. So they gulp in air, keep it, into the, keep it in their stomach, and that actually keeps them from sinking, so they stay neutrally buoyant. Uh, they can attain over three meters and probably about almost 300 kilos, uh, commonly caught around about the 80 to 100 kilo mark is, is about common. Um, they're not the strongest of fighters, they don't make very long runs unless you give them line uh, at the beginning of the fight, but because of their large weight and the size of the fish and where you catch them it's very difficult to the last bit of the fight to actually get it over the lip or, or onto the rocks. Uh, obviously a bit better to land them on sand, as with them being quite a soft bodied fish, you don't want to have it rolling over the rocks, it does, does tend to damage them. The males mature at about 2.2 meters and the females about 2.4, so very similar to a lot of the other sharks, about the 2 meter range. Um, the males are then going to be about 5 years old, the females about 6, so the females are a little bit slower to mature. Uh, unlike other sharks however, um, Raggies generally only have one or two pups. Now what happens with this is very interesting. The pups are born and they have, before they're actually birthed out into the world, when they're still in the female's uh, gestation sac, if you want to call it that, um, or womb, they're going to have uh, a little yolk sac with them. Now within the first few days they deplete that yolk sac, which is normally, like you see in a chicken egg, the yolk then nourishes the baby. It's exactly the same with sharks. The shark uses that yolk sac, takes it in, and then once it's taken that in, there's nothing left for it to eat. So it starts eating all the other young and the eggs that are left over in the, in the womb. And then you only get one or two sharks being born. So only the strongest of the strong come out. Bait-wise, like we said, being a piscivore, uh, you're gonna be using large fleshy baits to target them. Uh, something like a bonita head, sada head, something to that extent. With the teeth though, 
often the guys uh, strip the coating off the wire because you do get that coating when you grab it and pull it, it builds up and can stop the hook from actually setting in the shark's jaw. So what I'd recommend, getting some carbon coated wire, stripping off uh, the last little section and then having, in my mind, a 12-0 tuna circle is the best hook for them, always sets nicely in the, in the corner. And then yeah, throwing a, a full metal jacket is going to be your best bet at being able to pull him hard enough to get him out of the end. Uh, often with the smaller fish, those very impressive large teeth that they have, they can grip a bait and actually play with it a lot. And sometimes dig their teeth into it and you can't actually get a hook into their mouth. So you'll fight a fish, fight a fish, generally the smaller ones, sometimes on the big ones, and the hook will pop out right at the end because he'll just open his mouth and then shake it a bit and that, that bait will just pull off his teeth. And you never actually hooked him, he just gripped onto the bait and had that in his mouth. So yeah, this is, make sure you've, you've set the hook nicely into him if you are using J-Hawks or lean into him very hard on that first, uh, first takeoff when, you, when you're using a circle just to make sure you set into the corner of the mouth. Reggies are one of the fish that do tend to bite some anglers because they are very lethargic. When you pull them in, they don't tend to thrash around a lot and you'll be pulling him gently by his tail or sitting and you can actually curl around the entire way and bite his own tail. So do be very careful. Uh, there have been a lot of guys bitten by them and those teeth are long and sharp and they do leave a nasty scar. So just be careful, do uh, all your best to, to handle them properly and get them back in the water quickly. In terms of, of targeting and, and tackle, uh, when I'm throwing a bait, 10-0 circle hook, it's perfect for a very, very big bait. Uh, still proud enough to be able to hook the fish and, and set into the jaw. If it comes to sliding a bait, I'm wanting to get a little bit extra distance maybe, um, I'm gonna slide using a single 12-0 circle hook. That's gonna be perfect for a very, very large bait if I do need to get it out a little bit further. In terms of reels, what I'd use is the 8000 Saltist. As we mentioned in many of the other videos, nice handle to grip, extremely powerful drag, very, very smooth. Onto that, 50 pound J braid. Uh, it's gonna take about 800, 850 meters of that. And on top of that, 200 pound braid leader, because you need that extra abrasion resistance when you're fishing with the FMJ, especially in a place like the Chance Guy. Um, in terms of rods, the new 15 foot Elite is a phenomenal rod, and it's got plenty of backbone, it'll be able to cast very far, and you'll be able to pull your ass off on any fish that you want. Do, 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 do.